Hello everyone. Welcome back to Chemarkam. Today we are going to explore the Hyama cross coupling reaction. So if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification. Let's see Hyama cross coupling reaction. So Hyama cross coupling reaction is a palladium catalyzed cross coupling reaction of argono triflate or argono halides with argono slanes to produce this corresponding carbon carbon coupling product. So just like Suzuki cross coupling reactions so where we need some of the activator especially base activator in order to activate the boron reagent so just like here so we need to activate the silyl reagent since silyl reagent is somewhat lower reactivity when compared to the other type of coupling reagents so the lower reactivity of silicon carbon bond so requires the use of activating reagent to enhance the reactivity of silanes and to promote the silicon palladium transmetallation. So mostly fluoride ion based sources used as an activator to promote the Hyama cross coupling reaction. So here you can see the some of the fluoride ion sources such as TPAF, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride and potassium fluoride, cesium fluoride and tris dimethyl amino sulfonium difluoro trimethyl silicate means that TASF. So let's dive into the catalytic cycle. So catalytic cycle just like our previous catalytic cycles. So which start with palladium 0 or palladium 2 precatalyzed. When you take the palladium 2 precatalyzed with a suitable ligand that generate in situ palladium 0 species which is 14 electron species. This 14 electron species undergo by oxidative addition with argonotriflate or argonohalides to produce this corresponding 16 electron species. Now this 16 electron species undergo by transmetallation with silyl reagent. So now you see this argonosilane initially react with fluoride ion sources which act as an activator. So that produce this penta coordinate species. So this is a actual transmetallating reagent for in this reaction which undergo transmetallation with this palladium species to produce this 16 electron species. So after the formation of this 16 electron species which undergo by trans cis isomerization to produce this 16 electron species. Now this undergo by reductive elimination to produce this carbon carbon coupling product. So here oxidative addition, trans cis isomerization and reductive elimination. So these steps are mostly similar to the our uh, other cross coupling reaction. So here we are going to discuss more in depth how the transmetallation takes place in Hyama cross coupling reaction. So for that now you consider this reaction. So now you see this alkenyl substrate having silyl group as well as the tin based groups. So when react with this iodo compound under palladium zero condition, so which readily undergo by carbon carbon coupling with this argono tin species rather than that silyl based species. So be, which because of the lower reactivity of silicon carbon bond, so which ultimately need for activating reagent to enhance the reactivity of silanes and to promote the silicon palladium transmetallation. So therefore there are several methods can be available to activate the silyl reagent. So now you see, so here a yeah, silyl substrate react with nucleophile that produce this penta coordinate species. So now this penta coordinate species ready for transmetallation with this palladium species. This palladium species coming from the oxidative addition that produce this palladium species which readily undergo by reductive elimination to produce this corresponding carbon carbon coupling product. So let's see one by one what are the methods are known to activate the silyl substrate. The first one is the fluoride activation. So here you see the silyl substrate so react with fluoride ion sources that produce penta coordinate silicate. So now this is ready for transfer the R1 group with this palladium species. So here we, you can see the some of the fluoride ion sources such as tetrabutyl, ammonium fluoride, potassium fluoride, cesium fluoride and TASF. 
So let's move into the another type of activation. So silanol and silver oxide activation. So here you see this is a silanol derivative. So the silanol derivative react with this iodo compound under palladium zero and silver oxide act as a activator to produce this carbon carbon coupling product. So here you see how this activation takes place. So now you see, so this palladium zero species which readily undergo oxidative addition with this iodo compound that produce this corresponding palladium species. So here this is the silyl substrate. So here the silyl substrate. Now silver oxide, so silver now interacted with this iodo group. So here halide extraction takes place. So at the same time, this oxygen activate this silyl substrate. So in the way here transmetallation takes place to produce this corresponding carbon-carbon coupling product. So instead of using silver oxide, we can use the base. So here you can see the base mediated activation of silanol. So initially silanol react with base that produce this corresponding siloxy ion species. This siloxy ion species interact with this palladium species that produce this corresponding intermediate. So this corresponding intermediate react with one more time with this siloxy ion to produce this corresponding intermediate. Now this is ready for transmetallization. So here you see this alkanyl group transferred into this palladium species by transmetallization to produce this corresponding intermediate. So which then undergo reductive elimination to produce this corresponding product. So let's move into the some of other type of activation. So here you see silatine and TPAF activation, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride activation. So now you see, so this is the tetra coordinated silyl substrate. So their angle is 109 degree. In case of penta coordinate species, their angle is 90 degree. So now you see this silatine or silacyclobutane substrate. So their angle is 79 degree, which means that this species is highly strained species. So which is somewhat in between to the tetrahedral and trigonal pi pyramidal. So when you are some nucleophile, for example, some of the fluoride ion sources, so resulting that reduction of ring strain. So now you see this one is a penta coordinate species. So their angle is 79 degree. So which is somewhat close to the trigonal pi pyramidal in the way their strain is somewhat released by the reaction of this nucleophile. So now this penta coordinate species ready for transmetallization that produce corresponding product. So now you see this is one of the example for this type of activation. So here you see vinyl substituted silacyclobutane that react with this iodo compound under TPAF and palladium zero condition to produce this corresponding vinyl substituted product. So let's discuss about the selectivity. So first one is the regioselectivity. So transmetallization of alkenyl silanes takes place with retention of the double bond configuration just like in other cross coupling reaction due to the lower transmetallization rates competing on to insertion of the alkene in the intermediate of organo palladium complex may take place just like heck type of reaction so which offer the hyama reaction in some cases result in the sign substitution so this type of selectivity depends on the r groups present in this iodo compound so let's talk about the stereo selectivity now you consider this example this r triflate react with the silyl substrate so this silyl substrate containing 38 percentage of enantiomeric excess so which undergo hyama reaction condition to produce corresponding product by retention configuration so when you use hmba thf mixture of solvent that produce inversion configuration. So just like solvent effect, temperature also affect the stereo selectivity in the Hyama cross coupling reaction. For example, when you conduct this reaction under 50 degrees Celsius by using THF solvent that produce retention configuration, the same solvent when you use 75 degrees Celsius that produce inversion configuration. So why this difference happen? So now you see the mechanism. So initially, the TH of solvent and 50 degrees Celsius that produce retention configuration. So this 
So this reaction probably undergo by cyclic transient state in order to produce this retention configuration. In case of when we use polar solvent and higher reaction temperature that may undergo by open transient state that produce inversion configuration. So let's moving to the some of the examples are based on Hyama cross coupling reaction. Before moving that, let's see how to prepare the organosilane or organosilicon compounds. So this is the first example. When you take the bromobenzene, react with n butyl lithium that produce phenyl lithium. So the phenyl lithium react with alkyl silyl chloride that produce this corresponding silane species. So this is the another example when you take the bromobenzene react with triethyl silyl hydride in the presence of platinum oxide catalysis that produce this corresponding organosilanes. So this is the another example when you take the bromobenzene react with magnesium powder that produce corresponding Grignard reagent. So this Grignard reagent react with tetraethoxysilane that produce this corresponding product. So this is the another example when you take the Grignard reagent that react with dichlorosilacyclobutane that produce this corresponding aryl substituted chlorosilacyclobutane. So this is the another example. So here you can see the preparation of alkynyl silanes. So when you take the alkyne react with trialkyl silane in the presence of platinum or rhodium catalysis that produce this corresponding silane species. So this is the another example when you take the alkynyl bromide which react with tertiary butyl lithium and followed by dimethyl cyclosiloxane that produce silanol derivative. So now you see this is the way, way for preparation of alkynyl substituted silacyclobutane. So for this first you take the alkyne which react with dipol H to produce allyne species. This allyne species react with this silacyclobutane reagent that produce this corresponding alkynyl substituted silacyclobutane. So let's see the Hyama cross coupling reaction examples. So this is the first example when you take the iodo compound which react with this vinyl substituted silyl substrate under palladium zero catalysis and TASF actasia activator that produce vinyl substituted product. So this is the another example here you see here is silanol. So silanol is activated by TPAF reagent under palladium zero condition this corresponding carbon carbon coupling takes place to produce this product. So this is the another interesting example now you see here alkynyl substituted silyl substrate which react with this iodo compound under this basic condition using palladium zero catalysis that produce this corresponding product. So this is the another example now you see this one is a silanol derivative here silver oxide act as a activator this silyl substrate that produce this carbon carbon coupling product. So let's see some more examples. So now you see this silanol derivative is activated by CCM carbonate base. So under palladium zero condition which readily coupled with this substrate to produce this corresponding carbon carbon coupling product. Let's moving on. So this is the another example as well as interesting example. Now you see so one side is silanol derivative another side is here silanes. So when you use 4 methyl iodobenzene under basic condition palladium zero catalysis that readily coupled this position to produce this corresponding product. So now you see this product has one more silyl group. So when you use palladium zero condition and TPAF so this act as a activator to activate this silyl substrate that readily undergo by carbon carbon coupling to produce this corresponding product. So let's see some more examples. So now you see this silyl substrate which react with this substrate under TPAF and palladium zero which produce this corresponding alcohol product. So now coupling takes place this position. So this is the another example. So vinyl substituted silacyclobutane. So under this reaction condition to produce vinyl substituted product. So this is the another example. So now you see indole 
substituted silanol derivative under basic reaction condition so which readily undergo kiyama cross coupling reaction to produce this corresponding product so this is the another example so initially silanol reagent formation takes place by using tertiary butyl lithium and dimethyl siloxane reagent that produce this corresponding silanol substrate so this silanol substrate react with palladium zero and iodobenzene to produce this corresponding carbon carbon coupling product so let's see some more example so now you see this one is a alkyl bromide derivative so this one also feasible in hiyama cross coupling reaction by the selection of proper catalysis i mean proper palladium source and ligand and proper activator that that allow to the carbon carbon coupling to produce this corresponding product so apart from that reaction so that hiyama cross coupling reaction also useful for the synthesis of some of the natural products so this is the one of the natural product synthesis intermediates so now you see this substrate so this one is a intramolecular version of hiyama cross coupling reaction so when you use tpaf as a additive and palladium zero so which readily coupling takes place this first position and ninth position that produce this corresponding nine member ring system moving to the hiyama cross coupling reaction summary the organosilicon substrate used as a coupling partner so which are low cost low toxicity and are highly stable to a variety of reaction condition so which is compared to the boron based reagent in suzuki cross coupling reaction and tin based reagent in the silla in the stille cross coupling reaction and magnesium based substrate in the kumada cross coupling reaction and zinc based substrate in the nigashi cross coupling reaction aryl iodides and bromides have been predominantly used as electrophiles in this reaction instead of cheaper and widely available aryl chlorides and tri alkyl silyl reagents which are more difficult to be converted into the reactive silicates therefore less suited for this kiyama cross coupling reaction i hope this explanation has helped you to understand kiyama cross coupling reaction if you enjoyed this lecture just give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and don't forget to come or come for more engaging lectures like this so here you can find the some of the practice problems when you get the free time just to give it a try and finally thanks for watching bye bye